um, warm good morning to everyone. So we shall begin today's session. Welcome to day five of the one week workshop on research and academic publication and ethics organized by Economic Study and Research Center, Department of Economics, Bahana College, in collaboration with IQSC Bahana and funded by Joha Development Authority. In the past four days, we have touched upon the aspects of content writing, how to select journal for publication, research and publication ethics, and how to write research papers for conferences and journals. We also touched upon on textbook writing author's perspective. Yesterday, we had sessions on creative writing for newspapers, philosophy, ethics, and scientific conduct in research. So today, on the first session, we will begin with software tools for checking similarity index. And this session will be conducted by our very own Dr. Anupam Chanda. Dr. Anupam Chanda is currently working as a librarian of Bahana College, Jorhat, Assam. He completed his MLIS from Department of Library and Information Science, Assam University, Silchar, and obtained a PhD degree from the same on implementation of RFID technology in libraries of higher educational institutions of Northeast India, a study in the year 2018. Prior to joining Bahana College, he worked as an assistant librarian with Nelit Gohati for two years and also with Assam Dan Bosco University for three years and five months. He has implemented RFDI in both the campuses of Assam Dan Bosco University. He has published over 30 articles and three books and also attended five international conferences and presented papers in the seminars. He has also attended many workshops, training programs on library sciences and he has also organized many workshops on the same. He is currently associated with two journals as an editor, and he has attended the Koha workshop at IIT Bombay under NMEICT project. And he has also the coordinator of IIT Bo Bombay for conduction of Koha workshop. And besides that, he has installed Koha library automation software in 15 libraries in Assam as well as Nagaland. He has also attended a few workshops on plagiarism software. So with this brief introduction, we I would like to say that Dr. Chanda is quite equipped with all the similarity index and plagiarism and whatever is associated with research. So I would like to hand over the stage to now Dr. Chanda so that he can deliver his lecture. Dr. Chanda, over to you. Uh, thank you, Professor Madam. I'm right now. I'm working as a librarian, as Professor William said, in Bahana College, and I'm also associated with this workshop, uh, not only as a resource person but also um, as a committee member. So I have been assigned uh, to deliver a lecture uh, on software tools for checking similarity in this. So let me share my screen. Is it visible to everyone? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, 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 okay. So today my topic is uh, software tools for checking similarity index. Uh, similarity index is nothing but, uh, as you know, plagiarism. So there is a, not much difference between similarity index and plagiarism. 
although the uh, popular term is plagiarism but the thing is it is uh, sometimes it is not exactly plagiarism it is similarity index so most often we face similarity index problem not plagiarism problem okay so let me uh, go through what is plagiarism first of all uh, the term plagiarism is a latin word um, plagiarism which means kidnapping all of you know what is kidnapping okay so the, the plagiarism is like same as kidnapping you are kidnapping others thoughts or ideas or uh, others uh, write up uh, and uh, you are pretending as your own that is called plagiarism so it is an intellectual theft we can call it as an intellectual theft okay and it is a serious scientific misconduct the plagiarism is considered as serious scientific misconduct so definition of plagiarism there is a, there are uh, so many definitions of plagiarism so i am um, this definition i have uh, pasted here this plagiarism is the use of others plagiarism is use of others published and unpublished ideas just uh, see the line published and unpublished not only published if you use others unpublished ideas also this is called plagiarism published and unpublished ideas or works or other intellectual property without attribution or permission and presenting them as new and original rather than derived from an existing source so if you use others ideas and uh, pretending with, without any permission and uh, presenting it as an original and um, uh, without giving any source or without giving any uh, uh, references this is called plagiarism the intent and effect of plagiarism is to mislead the reader as to the contribution of the plagiarizer so this applies whether the ideas or words are taken from abstract research grant application institution review board applications or unpublished or published manuscripts in any publication format print or electronic so if you take any ideas or any print, uh, this contribution from others others can it may be from abstract it may be from research grant application it may be from anywhere in, uh, in print or electronic media um, if it is available in print media or electronic media it is called plagiarism sometimes we often thought that uh, if it is available in print media then um, it may not be uh, it may not be checked by uh, this plagiarism detection software yes of course if it is available in print media only plagiarism detection software cannot check the similarity index but plagiarism in based on ethics not the um, not based on similarity index uh, checking on the re report of similarity index software plagiarism is based on ethics if you know that yes i copied or i uh, uh, copied some uh, something from others okay and and i am writing it uh, and i am uh, giving my own name it is also plagiarism so mostly plagiarism is based on the ethics only and the similarity index software or plagiarism detection software what they do they only check the similarity this yes this uh, this write up is exi already existed or already available in some places then the similarity index software will identify the existence already existence um, uh, information so plagiarism is plagiarism irrespective of intent source quantity and copyright okay so plagiarism is plagiarism if you uh, cite source also is also called plagiarism okay but the, as as already i told you that this is based on ethics some sources are like this is universal code so you have to put this okay but similarity index software or plagiarism detection software will identify these these also as a plagiarism okay but this is not plagiarism you have to um, you have to write the exact things like any uh, code you have to write the same okay but if, if you mention the source or if you mention in the reference section if you cite this this is not called plagiarism 
so what is cyber plagiarism nowadays cyber plagiarism is um, very much um, means popular the copying ideas text material from the web without proper accreditation is called cyber plagiarism. what we do we openly copy from the website or from any uh, articles or from any um, uh, any other sources any blogs okay and we think that this will not be not come under plagiarism but this is also called plagiarism so digital plagiarism is a term used to describe copying using computer so what is digital plagiarism when you copy using computer it is called digital plagiarism there is a quote creativity is fine but plagiarism is faster so just remind it that creativity if you create something it is well and good fine but if you copy or if you uh, um, kidnap some uh, al already published things this is called plagiarism and it is very faster just you have to select the things control c and control b in your word file very easy but if you create something in your own you can read you can uh, you can refer uh, earlier my published document you can read this and then you have to create by your own if you have, want to ever plagiarism so um, uh, the picture shows a person submitting report on plagiarism and the um, uh, officer sitting in the chair he told that you have copied all these of the internet this is the report of plagiarism and the report is uh, where you find the report this plagiarism detection software or this similarity index software will generate the report and if you copy from the um, uh, any source uh, any online source digital source then it will the software will track the source but the most um, this is also based on the uh, coverage of the software i will discuss on this then uh, how a plagiarism detection software can check the report or can generate the report sometimes you may have heard that in urkul the similarity index can 50 percent but in gamal it is came 10 percent so i will discuss on this also so what are the types of plagiarism there are so many types but uh, some simple types are like word for word just anyway. word for word or it is called as direct text then mosaic plagiarism, thesaurus or paraphrase, ideas, authorship, secondary sources, and self plagiarism. So, what is word for word direct plagiarism? So, word for word plagiarism occurs when a text or part of it are copied verbatim from an original work without acknowledging the author. So, if you copy something from any source without acknowledging from the author, then it is called if you directly copy something okay you are not going to paraphrase this you are not going to change the synonyms you are directly copying something this is called word for word plagiarism the lack of quotation marks at the beginning and end of short passages or i did indention for a longer one is considered plagiarism so uh, when someone copy directly from any sources this is called word for this uh, plagiarism mostly the school going children they what they do for their project report they directly copy from the google or from the google uh, wikipedia or from any blog or website so this is called what for what plagiarism and mosaic plagiarism is mosaic plagiarism occurs when a student borrows phrases from a source without using quotation marks or finds synonym for a author's language while keeping to the same general structure and meaning of the original so mosaic plagiarism means when you copy something from uh, somewhere and you just modified something but the meaning is same and without any quotation mark this is called mosaic uh, plagiarism then thesaurus or paraphrase in paraphrasing plagiarism the wording or word order of the original source is changed so what but the plagiarized text may retain too many similarities to the original. So it is like that you are copying something from somewhere and you are changing the uh, lines uh, here and there and you are uh, modifying the words. But the original source, but the meaning is same. Most of the meanings are same. 
Additionally, the plagiarized is still trying to pass off someone else's ideas or research as their own. So this is called paraphrasing then ideas. So now um, you may think that um, uh, how can we uh, plagiarize these ideas? Huh? How can we uh, kidnap or how can we copy someone's ideas? So plagiarism is presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own without, with or without their consent by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. Sometimes uh, some of your friends may discuss uh, with you about um, uh, so like any research project or any idea. So if you if you copy or if you implement his or her idea without his or her concern, this also may fall plagiarism. Uh, but the thing is, uh, if the other person can prove that yes, this was my idea, then only it will be plagiarism. Otherwise, it is not a plagiarism. Okay. All published and unpublished material, whether in manuscript, printed, or electronic form, is covered under this de definition. Sometimes some uh, manuscript or some documents are unpublished. Unpublished, uh, you may, you, 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 all of you know what is unpublished. Unpublished doesn't mean it is not written. Unpublished means it is not published officially. Okay, so if you, if you take some ideas, unpublished ideas, and publish it without the consent of the um, original author, then also it is called plagiarism, and this plagiarism comes under ideas. Okay, so authorship. What is authorship plagiarism? So plagiarism or authorship involves placing one's own name on the completed work of another without significant alteration. Okay, so if someone uh, suppose someone has put his or her name in your article without your consent. This is also called authorship plagiarism. An example would be purchasing a research paper online and submitting it for course credit at one's own original work. So this is called authorship plagiarism. Then comes secondary source. So secondary source plagiarism happens when a researcher uses a secondary source like a meta study, but only cites the primary sources containing contained within the secondary one. So it's often we do that we come, uh, we take various information or various data from the secondary source, but what we do, we only cite the primary source. We do not cite the secondary source because we think that this secondary source also uh, um, take the data from somewhere or also uh, take the data uh, from any, from the source. So we just uh, mentioned the source, but not, no, this is wrong. Suppose I have conducted a study on primary data and I have completed my study. For me, this is primary study, but for others, this is my study is secondary because he or she is directly, uh, he or she is not collecting the data directly. But when other refer, refers my work and men, mention only the primary source, not my work, not my citation, then it is called secondary source plagiarism. So avoid these things while you write your articles or research papers. Then comes the most dangerous thing is self plagiarism. What happened? The practice of an author using portion of their previous writing on the same topic in another of their publications without specifically citing it for formally in quotation. So what we think often is that this is my work. Uh, why should why to why should I need to uh, specifically cite my work? Uh, this is not the fact. Your work is already published. You are authors only. The copyright is with others, with the publisher. So you have to cite the cite properly your own work also. Hmm. So most of us often do self plagiarism. If we write um, the same type, same uh, article, similar article, not same similar art articles on a similar topic, we often consider our previous paper without citation. Because we know that um, we think that this paper already has been written by me only. So I can use this paper for another paper. This is not right. If, if your paper has got published, the, all the copyright will be with the publisher and you have to cite it properly. Sometimes you may need permission from the copyright to use the valuable information from your, from your papers also. This is called self-plagiarism. If you do not do this, this is called self-plagiarism. 
so this practice is widespread and at times unintentional so we oftenly unintentionally do that but we don't know what is what is the what are the consequences that thing. that's why you do this kind of thing so violates the copyright that has been assigned to the publisher as i already told your paper when, when your paper got published you are only an author the copyright is with the publisher something and if you are publishing in open access journal open access journal then your copyright will be with you not with the publisher but if you are uh, publishing in a commercial uh, journal not open access a subscribe journal then the publisher the copyright um, will be with the publisher so no concerns whether this is scientific misconduct okay so why do people plagiarize or we, i can say why do we plagiarize okay first of all lack of confidence if we have lack of confidence uh, on the particular subject area on the particular topic then what we do we we often copy from others this is called lack of confidence and for this reason many people many many of us plagiarize second is lack of knowledge on the ethics of scholarly writing or poor writing skills so if we do not have the knowledge of scholarly writing and if we do not follow the ethics of scholarly writing or we have poor writing skills uh, sometimes most many uh, few of us may have the poor writing skill in uh, english language so what we think we just copy we think that we can copy this from the google and we will paste so for this reason also we plagiarize don't care or laziness we don't care sometimes we don't care or laziness okay we will we'll submit the paper uh, just before the last day sometimes this happens that uh, you are if you are going to present the paper in a conference the last date is suppose uh, 12th of august and 11th of august you have been, uh, in, uh, you are starting to write an article that time what you will do you will copy from here and there and this is why we do plagiarize okay so don't care or laziness is one of the factor why we do plagiarize plagiarize pressures from the research guide this is uh, uh, sometimes this happens that re research guides are um, giving pressure to the scholars that you have to write two articles in a year uh, you have to present paper in this conference you have to uh do this project under me the, in in this circumstances often we do plagiarize because of the pressures of the research guide then publish or perish system what is publish or perish system we sometimes what happen suppose we um, we as a, we are as a group of research scholar and i have a i have two publication someone has three publications someone has eight publications someone has 20 publications okay so those who has two publications he will think that or he or she will think that i have to compete him i have to make my publication 10 or 15 within two years so that time what happened this is not possible uh, i'm i'm not in, this is not impossible but this is not, also not possible to write 15 papers Sir, I think yes. there is a glitch ah. in your network. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, we have uh, electricity gone. Okay, now I'm uh, audible. Yeah, you are. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, publish or perish system. What is publish or perish system? Uh, publish or perish system means suppose we have a group of scholar or a group of students. So, um, I have two publications, someone has five publications, someone has ten publications, like this. So, what we think, those who have two publications or those who have five publications, they, they think that I have to um, uh, compete, I have to cross him or her with, um, uh, uh, with publications. So, what we think, 
we think that within one year or within two years we have to publish 15 articles 10 articles which is near to impossible when you are go, go for a research work you have to do research not copy paste not report making so if you are going to do research it will take time and it will be published paper research not uh, this some, some quality of research so this publish of Paris system also bound us to do plagiarize okay then don't think they will get caught so sometimes what we think that we will not get caught okay we'll copy from some printed source from newspaper from uh, some other sources and we often think that we will not get caught and that's why we do plagiarize but um, uh, what happened and there are so many plagiarism software if some of the so some software may not caught your um, catch your uh, plagiarism some other software will definitely catch okay so don't think that they will not get caught okay then how to avoid plagiarism okay there is a strategy there are some strategy to avoid plagiarism remember that while you are at university you are expected to develop your own ideas and opinions about different issues which you can then reinforce and support with the research of other scholars okay when you are at university or uh, i may i may change the term when you are in an educational institute or in, in any uh, research lab or any kind of when you are doing any kind of research you have to develop your own ideas about the issues for that you have to um, uh, you have to do research on that issue. You have to study the fact. Okay. Then you have to reinforce the ideas and with the support of other scholars also. So this is the strategy one to avoid plagiarism. The main thing is you have to study. You have to do research. And then you have to write your research report or article. Then only you can avoid plagiarism. Strategy two know about the different ways in which you can correctly and appropriately use other writers or researchers voices in your assignments so you have to know the correct and appropriate way how to use other writers resources or other writers voice okay so this is this is strategy two you cannot directly write anyone's um, uh, ideas or anyone's already written them you cannot directly copy or paste you can um, uh, get some ideas with, from uh, their and then you have to write by your own okay you may develop you may update you may have not um, uh, not um, Upgrade the idea only to have plagiarism, but upgrade the idea to develop the idea. Okay, to develop some extra idea, to develop some other idea. Okay, do not only upgrade idea to avoid plagiarism. If you are uh, change the change any uh, prior idea, uh, any definite idea, then it may, your ideas may be incorrect. Okay, your uh, theory may be incorrect. So always think over and over before writing anything. Then strategy three, learn how to reference your assignments correctly. Yes, this is most important. You have to reference your assignments correctly. You have to cite the other's work correctly. There are so many formats, APA, MLA, Chicago. There are so many uh, styles are there. So whatever style you follow, mostly we follow APA or MLA. So you have to cite the assignments correctly. Practice writing in a way that will help your reader recognize the difference between your ideas and those from other sources so you have to practice your writing okay so that your audience or your reader may recognize or may understand your ideas and they can differ your ideas from other ideas so many times or sometimes i may say you cannot write a new Thing. but you can write a thing newly okay you cannot always write new thing but you can always write things newly so remember this and how to write a research paper without plagiarizing so 
first one is never forget using quotation marks when it is near okay so always use quotation marks when it is needed include only the most important quotes or remember this okay not include any so many quotes exact formulation okay paraphrase the information but do not provide it with exact formulation like uh, uh, do not copy or paste exactly okay and summarize the key ideas from every source instead of copying the whole thing sometimes it may happen that you are less aware about the fact and then you have to write on this so you have to copy you are bound to copy so in that case summarize the key ideas okay instead of copy the whole thing you just take the key ideas and then you write by your own or you can copy okay but don't copy the whole things watch out for pasting too long phrases watch out for pasting too long phrases means you have to think or you have to watch that i am copying how much phrases how this uh, what are the uh, word limit what is the word like 500 word 200 word 100 word uh, 50 words how much i'm copying okay so remember this always refer to the author where it is needed so if you are copying someone ideas always refer him or her always uh, cite always quote um, in the reference section also or in the main body also cite and you have to Uh, right now, bibliography. From the list of cited sources, in accordance with all rules, and include all important bibliographic information in it. So, you have to include the, all the bibliography information in the last part of your article or research or or thesis or in uh, whatever your research project. In the bibliography section, you have to properly cite the article or cite the author's work. It may be in website or sometimes. Uh, not sometimes oftenly what we do we do not cite the website we copy from the website but we do not cite the there is a uh, rules there is a system to cite the website in ap also ml also uh, you can cite the website you can make the site or online or using mendeley shorter or these are the citation management software you can use this also so sometimes uh, often not cite the Blocks. Okay, so what cited in reference pages at the end of your research paper? Hello, I'm I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are audible, but uh, uh, I think in between there is a glitch in the network, so your voice is sometimes breaking. Okay. so what cite and references pages at the end of your research paper you will need to include a page where you list your research sources in alphabetical order using the last name of the author or authors of your uh, sources the page is called what cited page in mla style or uh, and reference or in apa style or other styles also so uh, this is common thing of all of we know uh, in every of our research work there is a reference section reference page bibliography page so here we have to cite it it may be um, here i have mentioned alphabetical it may be alphabetical or it may be number wise uh, but if it is alphabetical then searching is easy okay then what should a research paper show a research paper should show at least two things these are what you have learned and think about a topic this is most important remember what you have learned and think about a topic and the second is what other people know and have said about the same topic so these two things should have in your research paper what you have learned and what you have think about a topic okay and what other people know and have said about the same topic then planning your work 
so writing a strong research paper takes a lot of time i have already told you and work but if you start early and divide the entire process into many small steps it will be much easier and much less stressful to complete remember okay so if you are going to start a research paper do not think like that that um, i will complete it within 7 days or do not think like that also that i will complete it in one year okay always you have to think you have to take small small steps and it will much easier and much stressful if you uh, complete it like a literature first of all i will do the literature if you think like the first of all i will do the literature Within seven days or within five days, I'll complete the uh, a part of literature review. Then I will decide uh, what methodology should I take to do the research to complete the research. Then you have to uh, make a questionnaire or checklist or you have to uh, and for data for data collection tools, you can go and take the interview or survey or observation whatever you may take. Okay, and then after data collection, you have to analyze. interpret the data you may write introduction in between them or after that also you may write the introduction part hmm. then you have to complete the uh, data analysis and then you have to write the uh, article or the report and then the major findings will come on the basis of your major findings suggestion you have to write a conclusion part so if you take small small steps part part then it will be easy for you and you can avoid plagiarism also otherwise if you are going to do your research for like article i have to write an article within uh, one week only then you cannot avoid like either you have to uh, like that time you are you will be you are bound to do like either okay so take small small steps and take lot of time and work lot of time doesn't means one year lot of time means the time which you are taking you have to devote completely yourself okay it may be one month it may 15 days also you have to completely devote yourself so these there are some ugc guidelines on plagiarism showing you uh, so penalties in case of plagiarism in submission is dissertation so penalties may impose in case of submission of thesis and dissertation but not in case of uh, article submission there is no such guidelines To submit article, uh, there is no such plagiarism guide, uh, guidelines uh, by UGC to submit an article. But to submission of thesis and dissertation, there are guidelines. Uh, now, what are the similar similarity percentages? My slides are visible or not? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So, institutional academic integrity panel. i a i p in most of the universities you will find institutional academic integrity in post penalties considering the severity of the plagiarism this is level 0 to level 3 there are four levels okay level 0 to level 3 so level 0 similarities up to 10% minor similarities no penalty so if your research project or uh, sorry the thesis or dissertation uh, the similarity index comes 10 or below 10 you may submit your thesis or dissertation to the university to get the phd degree or phd degree okay so similarity is up to 10% is considerable there is called minor similarity similarity is above 10 to 40 such a student shall ask to submit a revised script within a stipulated time period not exceeding 6 So if your similarity index comes down between ten to forty percent, okay, ten to forty percent, there is also a need to check similarity index by their own software. The software of UGC has not prescribed any software. Google is one of the software which UGC UGC gave free to the university. Okay, so this Urkun software is most of the university use Urkun software, and other than Urkun, there is a there is a software called Tarnitin. This is the most uh, highly uh, 
prized software. This is Tanditin. So many universities use Tanditin also, like IIT and IIT, they use Tanditin. So if your thesis is checked by Tanditin and it comes 10 to 40 percent, then you have to resubmit it within six months, not more than six months. You will be given time within six months if you submit the thesis. Then similarity is about 40 to 60 percent. Such students shall be debarred from submitting a revised fit for a period of one year. If your similarity index, uh, similarity percent is comes between 40 to 60 percent, then within one year you cannot submit your thesis. After one year only you can submit your thesis or dissertation. These are as per UGC guidelines. Then similarity is above 60 percent. Such student registration for the pro for that program shall be cancelled so if your similarity comes above 60 percent okay so your registration may be cancelled so note one there is penalty on repeated plagiarism such as a student shall be punished for the plagiarism of one level higher than the previous level committed by him or her in the case plagiarism of the highest level is committed then the punishment for the same shall be Operate. So, if you plagiarism on your thesis, there are punishment penalties also. And no two penalty is where the degree of credit has already been obtained. If plagiarism is proved on a date later than the date of award of degree or credit, as the case may be, then his or her degree or credit shall be put in a evidence for a period recommended by the IAIP and approved by the head of institution. Suppose you have already submitted your thesis or desertion and you got the degree also. And after that, it is found that your um, desertion is more than 40% plagiarism or more than 60% plagiarism or more than 10% plagiarism. In that case, your degree may be cancelled. Your you may be punished okay you, there may be some penalty on you and then you have to resubmit your degree or maybe they will cancel your registration or they will not allow to submit you to submit your um, uh, thesis or direction again so it's totally depend on institutional academic integrity panel what they take the decision so there, there are some guidelines uh, by UJC, but ultimately Institutional Academy Integrity Panel will take the decision that what should do with this scholar. Okay, so remember these things. You have to, you have to control your plagiarism within 10%, similarity index. You have to control your similarity index within 10%. Sometimes what happened uh, when we going to write our uh, suppose um, our dissertation thesis in the in the dissertation thesis you have to include some institutional profile institutional profile means suppose you are conducting research on bahana college and you are um, going to add the institutional profile about bahana college uh, what are the functions of bahana college what are the uh, uh, some information about bahana college that time what you will do you will Often, uh, what we do, we will uh, consider the website information. We will copy the information from the website and we paste it in, in the in our thesis or dissertation. But the thing is, this website information is available online. And when this plagiarism detection software, similar index software, check your dissertation, it will catch this online source and it will show that it is plagiarism. But it is actually not plagiarism. You are not. Uh, you are not. Uh, uh, saying that this is my uh, creation. You are saying you are not saying that this is my creation. You are only put the information. Your thesis that Here comes the ethics. So in the software. In the those there is an option exclude option okay admin can exclude this part so whenever you will check your thesis or dissertation the guide and the scholar have to see with the admin of this 
similarity checker hmm, similarity checker admin you have you need to seek with him or her this is i have taken from this website and i can change this you cannot change the bahana college in 19 in the year 1966 has to, uh, uh, cannot change it you can paraphrase it but it has changed so in the case you have to see with the Will take a you need to stick with him or her. This part is you can exclude because this part is directly. This is a general information, not an idea or not an answer. Okay. Chanda, sir. Uh, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, Chanda, sir. Uh, but can you kindly check your network? Your voice is uh, breaking. Yes. Sir, your voice is breaking. I think um, the participants are not able to hear it properly. Uh, someone has wrote, sir, your voice is breaking, sir. Okay. Can you kindly check it once, please? Okay. Is, uh, yeah. Uh, I apologize for the interruption. Yeah, it, uh, now it is clear. Yes, sir. Now it is. Oh, okay, okay. No, no matter, no matter. You just tell me because the internet is very much um, uh, unstable here. <laughs> I get it, sir. I'm please using my uh, geo uh, network, but this is also poor, and my um, our college internet is unstable today. Okay. okay, so once again, I'm, I'm telling you, so the similarities up to 10% is called minor similarities. So there is no penalty for this and similarities above 10 to 40%. In such case, you will, will be given six months. Remember, this is for submitting only thesis and dissertations only, not for article. The, for article, there is no such rules, but if you follow the same rules for the article also, it will be good for it. Okay, so similarities above 10 to 40, uh, 40%. Means within 10 to 40 percent, you will be you will be given six months to resubmit your thesis or dissertation. And similarities above 40 and less than 60, less than equal 60, you will be you cannot submit your thesis or dissertation within one year. You have to submit after one year only. And your if your uh, similarity index found more than 60 percent, your registration may be cancelled in that case. And Suppose you have already submitted your thesis and you have not checked the similarity index and already uh, your thesis got approved and in, you have got the, you got the PhD degree also. In that case, what will happen if later part also your thesis found more above 60 percent, similarity index above 60 percent, your degree will be cancelled. They may impose penalty on you. They may can, cancel your registration. Uh, so totally is dependent institutional academic integrity panel the decision will be taken by the institutional academy integrity panel under the ugc guidelines okay so in that case so this is very dangerous remember so whenever you are going to write any article also any uh, m, m, m phil phd thesis you just remember that we need to i need to reduce my similarity index below 10 percent whatever the um, thing is but the thing sometimes what happens sometimes we do research on uh, some area where we have to copy or paste some data from the website these are not uh, these are general information data okay not the concepts if you are copying some concepts or ideas this is called plagiarism. if you are copying some general information uh, like information about um, pmo office this is not um, plagiarism. information about uh some uh, some organization okay some organization that organization is established in this year this uh, this, uh, this is the courses uh, available in this organization these are not concept these are the general information and you can copy and pay, copy your page but similarity index will not similarity in index uh, checking software will not consider uh, this uh, will, will consider this as plagiarism only because this works as a binary digit 
similarity index software how it is work it works with a binary number 0101 so if my name onupam okay onupam is written somewhere it will also take it as a plagiarism but the thing is 14 uh, 12 word sentence or maybe 14 i am not sure the 14 word sentence more than 14 word sentence will be considered as plagiarism less than for as per ugc norms less than 14 word sentence is not uh, considered as plagiarism otherwise i am a good boy is also will be a, also plagiarism okay so i am a good boy he is a Uh, good girl is not a plagiarism because this is not 14 words sentence or 12 words maybe 14 or 12 i'm a uh, little bit confused uh, so <clears throat> as per ugc guidelines you need to check this okay and how say how uh, this uh, plagiarism software similarity index software works this works as binary digit like everything in computer is binary okay so similarity index will check the binary digit only you will not check that this is the um, quotes from by nehru this is the quote by gandhi this is the quote by um, narendra modi ji something like this you will check binary digit this software will check binary digit okay so for that some commercial software not some commercial all the commercial software has a provision of excluding okay so whenever you are going to check your thesis or dissertation for the final submission you need to sit with the person who will check your plagiarism and with your guide hmm. if your guide will sit with you it is very much uh, helpful for you otherwise the person may not listen your listen you you will listen your guide definitely and your guide may instruct in that this part is not you can exclude this part you can exclude this part likewise you can reduce the plagiarism okay but uh, do not exclude the um, uh, if you are copying some ideas from uh, any or do not exclude it otherwise in later part you cannot justify to the authority that why you have excluded this you should justify the authority that yes this part i have excluded uh, in the plagiarism detection software because of this reason because this is a general information everywhere you will find this information this is not plagiarism okay So this, in this way, you can reduce your plagiarism. So there are some. I'm going now. I'm going to show you some commercial tools for checking similarity index. And before that, if you have if if you have any questions, you can ask me, uh, or else you can write in the chat box. Uh, later part I will answer, or you can ask me right now also. About anything regarding UGC guidelines, regarding other other plagiarism uh, system, you can ask me. Okay. So, do, um, anyone have any question? Participants, you can open your microphone directly and ask your question to the resource person, or you can type your uh, questions in the chat box, uh, and we will take it up from here. and if you have none then we will proceed with the session and you can reserve your question for the later half of the session when we will okay. be opening the session for discussion thank you so i am i am moving on this commercial tools for checking similarity index so this commercial tools are used by the institution only you cannot purchase you can purchase but the, um, uh, it will need huge amount to purchase this commercial tools so most of mostly the education institution use this commercial tools for checking similarity index first of all it is original earlier it was urkun now it is original every most of you know about urkun software urkun by ugc not by ugc a uh, few few years ago ugc has given uh, free subscription to of urkun to all the university so now it is original by tarnitin so tarnitin has already taken this uh, software Uh, it is called original so most of the university use original software to check the similarity index and there is an option to exclude many things uh, when i was in uh, assam don bosco university i have checked more than 50 theses in original and more than 2000 articles in this uh, software so um, only admin only admin can uh, exclude this part uh, and generate the report okay so this is one of the commercial software very good i can i can say very good software and one more thing um, uh, i'm i'm saying you that this 
similarity in their software works on the database on how how many database they have covered the report based on the database suppose original has covered 5000 billion database so your percentage of similarity index may high than other software so the basic concept is as much as database covered by the software the report will be that much perfect okay so original or urkun has covered many databases that's why the similarity percentage can in higher then next one is Tarnitin. So Tarnitin is one of the best software in the world, I can say. So, and its base price is, I think, 3.5 lakhs for a one year subscription, single user subscription. So most of the IIT, NIT, and universities also, they use Tarnitin software. Although Urkundis or original is free, then also the uh, NIT, IIT is using Tarnitin software uh, because Tarnitin gives um, almost exact similarity index uh, percentage because it covers many databases, billions of billions of databases. So the basic, I have already told the basic functionality is the coverage of database. And from this database, this software can check the similarity index. If the software have, don't have this database, then he, this software cannot check the similarity index. Okay, so the concept is, how many database the software have and then only the percentage it will show the exact percentage then there is a software called authenticate this is also a very good software authenticate uh, only institution can purchase we cannot purchase it because these are very much costly software okay we cannot purchase this authenticate but authenticate also a very good software uh, then another software is Drillbit. Drillbit, this is Indian made software, Drillbit. And Tanitin, Urkun, these are uh, not India made, uh, made in India. This Drillbit is made in India software. And Drillbit is also a very good software. And besides this plagiarism, there are so many features of this software. In Tanitin, you can, uh, this, is a, this is also content management software also. You can manage your classes. If you are a teacher, you can, to, you can provide assignments through this Tarnitin and this, there are so many facilities available in Tarnitin as well as Drillbit, this, uh, this software. They not only check the plagiarism or similarity index, rather than they provide various facilities also. Then there are a few semi-commercial tools for checking similarity index. Okay, so these are commercial tools which I have shown you. These are shown you. These are commercial tools. There are so many other commercial tools also, but these are popular commercial tools for checking similarity index. Um, often you uh, heard about this uh, name, Tanetin, Urkund, uh, Authenticate, GDB. Okay. And there are some semi commercial tools for checking similarity index. The first one is Scriber. Okay. So there are some uh, pros and cons. Finds the most plagiarism and works for edited text. You can edit the text also. Does not store or sell document. This software will, doesn't store your document or they will not sell your document. Offers a happiness guarantee and life support. They will support, uh, they will give life support. Offers an own source um, checker to check for self plagiarism. So you can check your self plagiarism. Offers a limited free version. Limited, that's, that's why it is called, uh, I have, I, I have uh, uh, put it under semi commercial it will give you limited free version okay then concert quality comes at a price it is obviously if you want some quality similar index check to report then you have to pay price cannot work directly in a tool in the tool so this is cannot work directly in the tool so this is about the subscriber mm, i'm not going to read all these things uh, just Instead of requiring user subscriber of the subscriber charges per plagiarism check is 19.95 dollar to 39.95 dollar depending on the word count. So you can use it freely also, but if you if you want some uh, good uh, report, then you have to subscribe it. The price are prices are 19.95 almost 20 dollar to 40 dollar. Okay, then. 
there is a one point issues can be fixed to scriber free citation generator you can generate free citation which generates proper citation for any missed or improperly cited sources suppose you have missed some citation or you are cited improperly so this software will help you to generate proper citation and it will correct your improper citation and it will cite it properly okay so there is a another tool quitext so quitext is also uh, not completely free but you can use it as a uh, free so these are some pros and cons of course a citation assistant that helps with adding missing citation so it offers a citation assistant so sometimes you may miss some citation so it offer uh, it will show you that this citation you have missed you can put it in the, in the uh, research paper detects most of the plagiarism here the the pros are detects most of the plagiarism means they they have how many database they have subscribed on the basis of this they will this software will check the plagiarism so here that's why it is called most of the plagiarism multiple support of, of options but no live support so no live support they will provide but multiple supports are there live support means um, if you are facing any problem uh, at the same time the company or the uh, company uh, persons will provide the support to you but there is no live support but multiple support also um, options are there then partial matches where one source text is matched to multiple sources so the cons are partial matches <clears throat> same same uh, you, you have written same same things twice thrice in your uh, article it will also take uh, the plagiarism doesn't work well or scholarly sources quite a few false po positives so it may give a few false positives also so users can check up to 2500 words with a free trial so you can check your one article hmm. a small article you can check but after that they need to subscribe for nine or ten dollar in a month so there is very mini minimum ten dollar in a month with 700 or 800 rupees so in a month you can uh, if you pay 800 rupees you can use it for a month but up to 2500 words it is free free trial okay one time then there is grammar it is very popular similarity index software we oftenly most of us oftenly use grammarly for check the grammar uh, and if you subscribe <coughs> Grammarly, you can check the plagiarism also. So the pros and cons often find the actual plagiarized source, offers a language and citation assistant, does not sell or share documents with other parties, these are cons. Then cons are does not perform well for edited text. Character limit is 1,1400 to 25. Uh, 14,000 to 25,000 words per article and one lakh total limit. Same colors for different sources and formatting is temporarily removed. So this is very crucial. If you are checking any similarity index or your, your thesis and or your dissertation uh, and the report paints in the same color, you will be a little bit confused. So uh, most of the similarity index tools provide different different colors for different different percentage like red color blue color yellow color like this but grammarly same color so the grammarly cost monthly plan 30 dollar per month or a yearly plan if you subscribe for a yearly plan it will cost um 144 dollar means 12 dollar per month so this is grammarly then unicheck is one of the um, uh, semi commercial tools for similarity index so these are the pros and cons often identifies the actual plagiarized source does not sell source uh, without permission or uh, they, they do not share uh, without permission and they provide live su support here you will find the live support okay then um, unclear support report causes difficulty in finding the plagiarized sources these, these are the cons same highlight colors for different sources provides multiple matches for one plagiarized sentences and this is also free, uh, not free. User can check 200 words for free, but after that, pricing is based on the number of pages. Five dollar for 20 pages, ten dollar for 50 pages, fifteen dollar for 100 pages. So these are the uh, uh, pricing uh, for this unit check, and you can check up to 200 words for free. So this is very limited. 200 words, you, know, you can um, you cannot check your abstract also. 
our abstract is in more than 200 words so sometimes uh, in, you are going to write an application or something like this within 200 words that time you can use this unit check to check the similarity index then plat scan is one of the semi commercial software so the browser often identifies the actual plagiarized source full match you pay for a certain number of words that you can use for on different occasions does not sell or share documents without permission to share and these are the cons no applicability extensive life support just email same highlight colors for different sources and sources are opened in a new tab unable to find most of the plagiarized sources so these are the cons and users can check up to 2 2000 words for free but after that you need to pay so this is a very good software i, I think for if you are going to you can check up to 200 2000 words so um, sometimes Uh, it will uh, fulfill your uh, need uh, to check the similar index and it is free up to 200 2000 words then there is pre post seo software tools so you can also use this uh, software tools for check the similar index free maximum 1000 words per search so you can use maximum 1000 words free per search different highlight colors for different types of plagiarism so these are the cons uh, pros and cons are unable to find most of the plagiarism same highlight colors for different uh, sources and original formatting is removed messy design due to ads so so uh, as it is free so most of the ads will come again and again so it will it may it may uh, make you messy okay so There are 1,000 words per limit charge, and after that, uh, the premium plan you can subscribe $10 to $45 per month. So the another one is plagiarism detector. So the, these are the uh, pros and cons. That one store or sell your document, and cons are difficult to find the plagiarized source in the report. Same highlight colors for different sources. Technical difficulties generating the report, and no life support. So up to 1,000 words, it is free, and then you have to pay $10 for 100 searches or 30,000 words. Okay. Then another one is Viper. So Viper is a popular semi-commercial software. Ability to compare your newest documents and previously uploaded documents. So these are the pros. Your, your uh, Viper can compare your newest and your previously uploaded documents. Sometimes uh, what happens? We check one document. multiple times so in that case if you use viper it will it, it will compare your previous and current document then different colors for different sources type and concept documents get published or on external website if you use the free version so if you are using the free version your document get published on the external website performs poorly for scholarly sources hard to read report due to partial matches so these are the cons so you can use this viper the, on the basis of the pros and cons you can choose your uh, software then compelity this is uh, this is also a plagiarism detection software so users can buy package containing 20 credits uh, 5000 words or for 399 100 creating 25000 words for 1499 or 200 credits 50000 words for 2499 this credits can be used for multiple documents so this is the um, uh, pros and cons of compile it here then pro writing aid so pro writing aid offers multiple language and style tools original formatting kept in intact in the tool does not store or sell a text and the cons are technical difficulties generating um, the report same highlight color for different sources no life support these are the pros and cons and pro writing aid also offers language and style tools in the same plan 24 dollar per plan or users can buy separate plagiarism check like these are the plans okay so here comes top 10 free plagiarism detection software which you can use any time okay you need not to pay anything but there are some limits so if you can consider the limits then you can use this free plagiarism detection software every day in on your small small uh, writing to check your small small or part part writing okay but the thing once again i am saying you this free plagiarism software only can detect 
the resources if you take something from open source resources not from subscribe journal if you are taking if you are copy or paste something from any subscribe journals this may be online or offline no matter this free software cannot detect this because this free software only detect the open source document the open source databases remember this so you do not think you never think like this that this software the my plagiarism percentage or similarity report gains five percent so i am safe no you are not safe if you take all these things from open source software open source your resources open access resources then you may think that i am safe but if you are taking resource information or data from some commercial uh, subscribe journal okay this free software will never identify this thing so first of all dupli checker so this is one of the um, most uh, popular plagiarism free open source plagiarism checker this is called dupli checker you can type it in the google it will come dupli checker and the process is very similar you just need to upload your document there may be a uh, word limit of 1000 okay or you can log in here also this is free login is also free and you can check your document then paper writer this is also a free uh, plagiarism checking software grammar and spelling also it will check free online proofreading no download so these are the uh, facilities provided by paper writer you can use this paper writer just google it and you just try okay how it is how you can check your plagiarism or grammar your grammar okay sometimes you may paste copy paste the words in in the section also or you, have, you can upload the document so there is another copy leaks so copy leaks is also a popular software you can use this copy leaks of plagiarism checking for others from uh, other purpose also and uh, this is free but um, uh, there is a free version and you can also purchase this copy leaks software you can subscribe not purchase you can subscribe this copy leaks software then there is another plex scan so plex scan you can the same way you can use the plex scan software for checking your uh, plagiarism and uh, th these are a limited version only you cannot check from I think more than 1000 or 1500 words. So you can check your resources or you can check your document par partly by part by part, 1000 words by 1000 words, like this. Just a minute. Then Plagarisma is another software. So here you can, you can see paste your text here. Hmm. So if you paste your text here, then you can check check the similarity index okay then there is plagiarism checker so here also you can sign up or freely you can use the plagiarism checker just paste your text in this box and check the plagiarism then quitext quitext is another software so this quitext here you can check the plagiarism these are all are totally free software but the features are limited in the free version and you can use multiple times this free version uh, you may sign in you may log in no problem uh, but all the features will not be available in the free version the all the features are available in the pro version then small seo tools is another software here also you can check your plagiarism then plagiarism is another software mm, you can see the screenshot just paste your text here it is 1000 characters limit okay it will give you 1000 character limit and you can check quick search or deep search both the options are there quick search as well as deep search then search engine reports so there are another software that is called search engine reports it, it, it also check plagiarism it has the facility to check your plagiarism or you can say similar index so I have also included some grammar checking tools. It is very important for the research scholar to write your report with proper grammar. Okay. Sometimes uh, we sometimes what happens, we write our report, but the, there are so many grammatical errors. 
for that we need to um, take help from some other persons who are uh, knowledgeable who are very much rich in this grammar but always it is not possible because we don't know who is rich in grammar but here are some tools you can use it to correct or to modify your grammatical mistakes okay and it, this is very much important for a research scholar or for anyone if you are going to write a paper hmm, your concept is very much very good your all the ideas are very good but your grammar is not that much good and these are not proper so nobody um, so your uh, paper will not be considered a good one hmm. if someone read your paper he, he or she will uh, comment like this this scholar doesn't know how to use the grammar and uh, how can how he write wrote the paper so this of comments often you may heard. okay so you can take the help of this grammar checking tools first one is grammarly this is absolutely free but once again i am telling you that you totally do not depend totally never depend on these tools you use your knowledge also sometimes these tools will mislead you okay sometimes this tool will mislead you never depend on this tool blindly you use your knowledge also so grammarly is one of the popular grammar checking tools as well as it can check plagiarism also so this is the features of grammarly and you all of you most of you may know what is the features of it you can you can you can add grammarly as an add on okay in your google chrome you can add grammarly as a add on you can add grammarly in your uh, ms word just type in the google add on grammarly for ms word okay one software will be you have to install one application and then you install the application okay then automatically it will merge in your ms word then whenever you are going to write whenever you will write something in ms word automatically grammar will show you that these are the mistakes so you can add on grammarly software in your ms word as well as in your google chrome also sometimes what happens we write application in our uh, directly in uh, email the body of the email that time if you add the grammarly button in your google chrome it will help you to identify the mistakes in your writer okay so there are another software is application tool with pro writing a so you can use this pro writing all these are available in the um, uh, google you just type the name and it will show you it will come okay you can use this pro writing a and many of you maybe know this software uh, but uh, as i have assigned uh, today to uh, show these things so i have included in my uh, slides this pro writing a then uh, another is linguix linguix is another software you can use it for check the grammar real time spelling and grammar corrections suggest forgotten punctuation mistakes master your style corrects your mistakes and gives writing advice offers chrome browser extension as i have told you grammarly also offers chrome browser extension provide performance statistics context appropriate recommendation so these are the features of linguix okay then writer so there are some features of writer writers is an ai writing assistant tool for business ai is artificial intelligence okay this grammar check app enables you to customize writing guidelines to your unique brand and write with the same style terminology and brand voice so writer features up to 200 custom terms chrome extension provide context security standard writing guidelines plain language grammar and spelling check so these are the features of writer then hemingway editor so hemingway editor was designed in such a way that it is less concerned about spelling and punctuation the tool put more emphasis on readability this grammar check free tools targets lengthy sentences wrong use of adverbs and 
complicated words so you can use these tools combinedly okay few tools match will check your grammar few tools will check your uh, abbreviation adverbs so you can use all these tools to finalize your thesis or dissertation or any writer not only thesis dissertation you are if you are going to write a story also by your own fiction that also that that time also you can use this software so features clean and easy to use interface doesn't require an internet connection so if you uh, download this app so it doesn't require an internet connection helps you if you want to break your large size sentence into small part to make it more readable this grammar checker tool improves readability for the average users suggestions and pointers are detailed once again i am telling you do not totally depend on this tool you can you, you have to use your own knowledge and based on your own knowledge you can analyze that yes this is these are the correct form that the software is showing the application soft software is showing okay if you don't know anything then you have to uh, consider this is as correct but sometimes what happen we know but in the hurry we often write in a wrong way in that case you you can use this software okay so there is one ginger software so the ginger grammar checker always allows you to write better english it is one of the best free grammar checker software that works on users patent pending technology that will enable you to correct grammar mistakes spellings and misused word word mistakes okay so the features are always contextual spelling correction correct grammar mistakes regarding subject verb and agreement misused word correction correct written text with is another one is silk writer so the features of silk writer is free grammar checker tools that display key statistics proposition and phrases index this sentence quality checker allows you to check readability index the flow of your content structure sentence length and word length so these are the features of uh, this uh, silk write then there is after the deadline the name is after the deadline so after the deadline is a free to use grammar and spell check application for the web this grammar checker tool helps you to detect error and provides smart suggestion for your content so the features are advanced style checking contextual spelling check misused words detection grammar checking software errors explanation tips okay so you can use all these softwares one by one and you can analyze which is which one is best and after that you can use this best version of the software then online correction so online correction.com is one of the best grammar checker online tool that allows you to search the highlight spelling errors this online grammar checker tool also highlights many grammar and style related mistakes okay so some features are this best free grammar checker tools helps you to check grammar and spelling errors stylistic hints this best grammar checker helps you to check stylistic issues auto correction you can review suggestions and sentence construction and vocabulary supports english dialects so this is the these are the features of online correction tools then droid antidote so the features are advanced character with smart filter multiple dictionaries with powerful search tools clear and detailed language guides punctuation excessive or missing comma one click correction of all typological error this is best grammar checker online tools which provide detailed synthetic analysis of sentences allows you to display bold italic and emojis so there are so many features in this uh, tool one click correction of all typological errors uh, this feature is very very good but sometimes it will create problems also okay sometimes it may um, it, it may happen that you are writing in a perfect way but the software detects it wrongly 
okay so if you click one and all typological error will correct then your correct thing will be incorrect sometimes so just uh, consider these things while you are checking grammarly in this tools so there is paper writer one software um, one tool which will help you grammar and spelling check like i said check um, uh, provides s3 result accurate writing version provided by the best grammar checker tool though this is free and it will it will provide you s3 result then grammar checker is one one software the features of the grammar checker is uh, basic grammar and spelling checking common active and passive voice checker web hosted and easy to access anytime and anywhere easy to use by simple copy pasting on content display information about the computerization punctuation a capitalization punctuation and spelling rules so these are the features of grammar check then another is rightful so there are some features of rightful uh, app this allows you to hear text pronouns so you can hear the text pronouns find out common words used in the article so it will find out the common words that are used in the article review synonyms of a given word sometimes it will give you the synonym of a given word. if you are, suppose you are uh, writing in a simple uh, word so it will give you the synonym okay this best grammar checker free tool help you to translate your text into english language so it is you cannot translate from assamese to english or bengali to english or hindi to english maybe but uh, as it is a uh, foreign software it may help you to translate from spanish to english okay so rightful helps you to improve the quality and consistency of write your writing this tool provides quick feedback on your writing by checking your text again against large databases of language such as google books google scholar google news so it will take sources from google books google scholar google news also although these are free rightful then there is language tool so the features are it is one of the best free grammar checking tool for which offers personal direction in direct addition stand alone app for desktop <coughs> so you can download the app for the desktop grammar spelling and style check suggested correction keyboard shortcuts it supports multiple languages like english french grammar polish and russian you will not find hindi bengali english because these are all foreign <laughs> tools developer are the foreigner means uh, from american or maybe from india okay so reverso is one is one of the uh, grammar checker tools so it features are instant translation up to 11 languages indexes of millions of words examples of use in context options to view reverse translation frequently details frequency details definition of conjunctions supported platforms ios android and web so you can download in your mobile also this reverse so app and you can check the grammar or uh, spell okay then skybans is another app a powerful free english grammar checker useful writing and style tools extension of api offers writing and st uh, styling tools detects repetition redundancies and suggests synonyms easy user interface so this is another software uh, to check the grammar then spell check plus is another software the features as text archiving or writing portfolio process based learning punctuation checker and capitalization grammar and spelling errors grammar explanation interactive grammar ex exercise and active voice checker commonly confused word so these are the features of spell check then outright is outright has some features it is one of the best grammar checker tool free tools this is the best grammar and it helps you to correct spelling grammar and punctuation errors you can meet your desired word count and customize suggestions write comp compelling sentences by using a more active voice this is one of the best grammar checker free app which helps you to track readability and grade level scores in real time and hence your vocabulary with stronger synonyms okay so these are the grammar checker tools and before that i have shown you the free commercial and semi commercial similarity index or you may say plagiarism detector tools 
so you can use these tools for your day to day research work okay or any kind of writing or you can you can uh, suggest your uh, suppose you have a, some of you have children also so you can suggest your children also to use these tools for their uh, school report okay for their report uh, which they are going to submit in the school uh, if you uh, from now onwards if you tell them if you tell your students if you tell your children not to do copy or paste not to ever and uh, not to do plagiarism then in the coming year they will when they, um, they will go for any kind of research they will not do the um, copy and paste things and it will obviously avoid the reduce the plagiarism percentage for them okay in our childhood nobody tells us what is plagiarism so right now we are we have to learn what is plagiarism but if we learn if we teach our children our students what is plagiarism and how it will impact in your research or in your write up then they will literally they will come to know that no we do, will not copy or paste we will write by your own and for grammar typical mistakes or to correct the grammar we will use these tools so in that process when they will come for when, when they will uh, do research in the later year they will follow the system so here are some questions i have already pasted here is plagiarism illegal okay so not itself plagiarism every time plagiarism is not it, illegal it depends on the form of plagiarism and whether the materials have been copyrighted okay so i have already earlier i have told you that if we copy or paste something from a suppose if you are uh, going to write about bahana college and if you copy this from our website bahana college website this will oftenly not considered generally this will not considered as plagiarism because you are using the general information not the concept okay so it depends on the whether it is materials have been copyrighted then plagiarism is a moral or ethical issue that is academia is subject to a code of honor totally it is based on moral or ethical issues if you are uh, um, write something in from a manuscript okay from a manuscript which are uh, printed means 200 years ago manuscripts and you are writing something the plagiarism detection software will never detect this thing but it's your ethics or moral values then whether you will write the same things from this manuscripts or you will take the idea from this concept and you will write by your own this is totally depends on the scholar in a commercial context plagiarism is subject to copyright law so you could face legal action should you plagiarize copyrighted materials to write your content or not submit original work so in a commercial context it is depend it is uh, subject to copyright law so if you copy some document from a copyrighted document then you may face some legal action okay suppose you have copied article uh, copied something from my article and it is already been copyrighted i may file a case against you okay did i plagiarize any of my written context so i am i am telling you one story a few days ago I and our IPC coordinator Dr. Pankaj Bora, we went to one uh, bookstore that is called Vidya Bhavan. Okay, so the owner of the Vidya Bhavan uh, told uh, he told us that uh, one author uh, I forgot his name, although I will not <laughs> tell uh, mention her name. One author has copied something from the already published book. The publisher is Vidya Bhavan. Vidya Bhavan has published one book. and the one renowned author he has copied the same thing from this book and he has write his own book okay so the owner of the vidya bhavan has made a complaint to the publisher not to the author he told me that we have uh, we have talked to the author and the author has not responded us properly we have tell him we told him that you have copied uh, the same context from our book you should remove this but the author did not respond 
properly. Then they complain, they file a case to the publisher. Then after that, what happened? The publisher destroy all the copies of this book and he send the proof of this to the Vidya Bhavan. So this will happen to the Vidya Bhavan owner may file a case uh, and may uh, claim for the compensation. But uh, he told me that uh, I, uh, I just um, uh, let it uh, let it go and I just um, uh, file, I just make a complaint that you please remove or you please destroy this book. We don't have any other issues. Okay. But if someone use your work like this, you may file a complaint, you may uh, file a compensation. You have claim claim for a compensation. Okay. Next is did I plagiarize any of my written content? To know for sure if your content is already online somewhere, put it through a number of the best free plagiarism checker and avoid plagiarism. If you do, do not want to use plagiarism checker then also you can check your if it is already existence in online source or not how just copy a sentence and put it in the paste it in the google and click on search if it is already available in some online sources it will show you okay this is also one kind of plagiarism checking checking similar index but you in that system, you will not find any percentage. How many, how many percentage? Sorry, how much percentage it is uh, coming my player similarity index, you will not find. Okay. But you can check whether it is available online or not. How does the free plagiarism checker work? The best free plagiarism checker work by scraping through the internet index of websites and comparing our written content to that already online. So already online document will be considered by the free plagiarism checker. In addition, some premium paid checkers are also able to access private academic database. I have already told you that free plagiarism checking software only can consider the open source, open access document, but some premium or paid checker, they have the access of private academic database. Private academic database means commercial database. Is plagiarism is the, uh, the same as copyright infringement. So plagiarism involves taking someone else's work and passing it off as your own copyright infringement can happen when that work has been used without prior permission from the author. So plagiarism and copyright infringement are not exactly same, but if you violate the copyright act, it will obviously be a plagiarism, but the plagiarism always doesn't mean you are violating the copyright act. Okay. So if you violate the copyright act, you will notice uh, that the publisher may complain against you. Sometimes you, you, may, you will notice that most of the website, website have a copyright sign, C within round. This is, this is the copyright sign, C within round. In the footer of their website, you often notice. Okay, This means you could potentially be sued, should you infect on any of their content. So if you copy any of their content without knowing them, without informing them, they may sue you. Okay. So you can copy, no matter, but you have to inform them that I am using your information for my research work. I am using Bahana College uh, information for my research work. If someone mail us or write an application to the principal and principal allows, yes, you can use, then it will not copy the violation of copyright. But without our proper permission, if someone use and Later part, we came to know that he has used our information without properly informing us, then we may should have legal notice to him or her. Then how do I report plagiarized content online? One of the easiest way to report this online is to Google using their copyright removal tool. You will need to report the page and provide your supporting evidence. The tool will then remove the web page and potentially the website from Google. You could also use the method to help file a lawsuit. So suppose you have uh, developed a content and someone has uh, developed a website by using your content without informing you. You do not, do not know your content has been used to develop a website. That time you can use this tools google copyright removal tool and you can complain against him 
then this tool will always automatically remove this website from the Google. Okay. Why should I check for plagiarism, plagiarized content? So there are uh, three uh, points. You should check for plagiarism for a number of reasons. The reasons are if content happen to be written elsewhere, you can ruin your academic scores. Suppose you have written an uh, article and already the contents are already published somewhere. So sometimes what, what will happen if someone checks your article or um, dissertation research and it will find um, uh, this more plagiarism, more similarity index, then it may ruin your academic area or scopes. It takes two minutes, so why not? Yes, of course, it, it takes two minutes to check your plagiarism, then why not? You should check your contents for plagiarism, whether it is uh, plagiarized or not. If you are writing content online and using SEO to propel your content, plagiarism would be a real issue and hold your website back in search results. So these are the reasons you should check the plagiarism of your content. Is plagiarized content the same as duplicate content? No. Duplicate content just refers to two copies of the same body of text. So you could have duplicate content from having the same content on multiple pages of your website, but this won't be plagiarized. So duplicate content means, suppose you have a website, you have written this information in one page, similar information in another page also. So this is called duplicate content, but this is not plagiarism. You can uh, use your, uh, suppose this, uh, whenever we write an article, the interpretation part in the graphical part we write something like this much percentage shows that this is the this 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 and same things we write in a finding section sometimes this happens in the finding section also this interpretation analyze the interpretation we often write in the finding section. so this is called duplicate content not this plagiarized content okay so here i have acknowledged uh, i am uh, giving lecture on plagiarism so if I don't acknowledge this source already, for my case also it will be a plagiarized one. So I have acknowledged this uh, source and uh, I have also mentioned that all the information is used for educational purpose only. Uh, so I, I, I would like to thank the creator of these sources. So I have collected this source from the website. The screenshots are from, the, from their uh, interface only. Uh, uh, from my side, I have only modified or paraphrased the languages, but the screenshots are exactly what the website is so this is my acknowledgement and thank you so much uh, everyone for listening and now the session is open for question answering if you want uh, if you have any question you may you may ask all right uh, so since sir has presented uh, and finished his presentation let me sum it up uh, of course, sir, your presentation is very extensive and insightful. Uh, I am, as your colleague, actually overwhelmed by the amount of information I had to observe today. Uh, so we went and I think someone's uh, um, my microphone. Mahindra, sir, can you please uh, switch up your microphone? Uh, actually, I want to ask a few questions. That's why it is. Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, sir, give me a moment. Let me uh, okay, sure, summarize sure, sure. it. Yes, sure, I'll sure. open the house for discussion. Okay. All right. So, uh, in his presentation, we had sections ranging from what plagiarism is to from grammar checking tools. So, in his presentation, sir has said that most often when we are faced with similarity index problem, basically we are talking about plagiarism issues, which is a serious scientific misconduct, irrespective of the intent, source, quantity, and the copyright. He touched upon the cyber or digital plagiarism and how it can be avoided. He also explained the different types of plagiarism ranging from word to word, mosaic, ideas, paraphrasing, authorship, secondary sources and explained under what condition researchers usually plagiarize, sometimes knowingly and sometimes unknowingly. And to avoid plagiarism, one needs to develop their own ideas and reinforce them. And knowing different ways to correctly and appropriately use others' work in assignments is one way of avoiding plagiarism. Referencing is also one of the ways. If used correctly, we can avoid plagiarism. 
and writing the ideas in a way so that it can be differentiated from someone else is another way. He also mentioned that planning your work in advance helps. And of course, it takes time to develop a quality work. In this context, he mentioned the UGC guidelines on plagiarism in case of theses and dissertations and the penalties in case these uh, guidelines are not followed. He mentioned that there are no hard and fast rules for uh, articles or research papers published in different journals, but it should be work if the guidelines for theses and dissertations could be followed. He mentioned some of the popular commercial tools for checking similarity index, mainly Urkund, Trintin, Original, Drillbit. And he also explained how the software works in are binary in nature and it works on the databases. More databases are indexed, it means the results would be more accurate and perfect. He also mentioned some semi-commercial tools like Scriber, Qtex, Grammarly for checking similarity index. He also went on to uh, mention some free plagiarism detection software that detects from open sources databases, but not from the subscribed ones, and does have limited features and, and partly checks the documents like duplicate checker, copy leaks, flag scan, plagiarism ticket, Qtex, etc. He on, at the end of his presentation, he also mentioned some grammar checking tools like Grammarly, Pro Writing Editor, Hemingway Editor, Ginger Software, etc. All these needs to be used cautiously because these are free tools and sometimes it might cause problems to our existing knowledge. So it should be used with caution. He also answered some of the frequently raised questions and uh, with this, he wrapped up his presentation. I would say it was indeed a very insightful presentation. And now I would like to take this opportunity to open the house for discussion. So if you have any questions, you can type it in the uh, chat box, or you may raise your hand or directly open your mic and ask the questions. Now the house is open for discussion. Mahindra Pratap Singh, sir, please go ahead. OK. Uh, thank you for uh, your informative presentation. No doubt uh, your presentation was very informative. But uh, still I have a few doubts and for that purpose I am asking questions. Yes. Uh, you mentioned about a number of softwares that are uh, used for uh, the detection of plagiarized content. Uh, starting from Authenticate, Unicheck, Turnitin, Inigo, Grammarly, Duplic Checker, uh, Qtex, Skyber, so on and so forth uh, you have discussed upon. I think uh, you covered more than 35 uh, plagiarism detection, detection software and uh, more than 10 uh, language correction software. Uh, I have only few queries related to uh, those. How many softwares did you practically use? Uh, because my question uh, is based on that. How many softwares did you practically use in your uh, means uh, for your purpose? Yes, uh, I have practically used original. That is, uh, earlier it was turned it in. Uh, when I was in Assam Don Bosco University as a librarian, so I was the only person to check the plagiarism for uh, thesis as well as uh, I was um, also, I'm um, not I was, I am also an associate editor of the, of a journal of this Assam Don Bosco University. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I had the privilege to check all these uh, articles which came uh, for this journal. So I have used practically uh, commercial software um, Urkun as well as Tarnitin also, Tarnitin for one month, uh, they have uh, uh, provided us free version, uh, trial version of Tarnitin. So for one month, I have used Tarnitin. Then uh, Delivit also I have used for one month, same way. Uh, they have provided us free uh, free trial version for one month. Authenticate also I have used for 15 days. All these are the, the process are almost similar, but some features are, uh, some more or less features are here and there, uh, depends on the software. And the okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. I have um, used okay, it, uh, okay, okay, okay. It means uh, you have used multiple softwares for this purpose. Mm -hmm. Now my question is, according to you, which software is the best for thesis evaluation and which software is the best for article and uh, research papers? Free, free or commercial? Hmm? Free no, or no. commercial? No, no, I am talking uh, for every. Everyone. Uh, the best is uh, uh, if if you have if your institution have turned it in, this is the best. Uh, and um, uh, the second best, I can say, not second best, uh, turn it in. Then Urkund is also very good because UGC is providing free to all the universities uh, Urkund software. 
so urkund is also very good and uh, this tanitin is best because it covers multiple many many databases those softwares who covers many billions of databases this is best but uh, again 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 uh, if you if you are considering for local suppose you are writing anything in local language in, suppose in our case if if we write something in assamese language then um, this tanitin will not uh show the perfect no, probably I, probably i could not convey my question to you properly my question was very simple hmm. according to you which one is the best for research paper and according to you which one is the best for thesis evaluation yes uh, th that is what i am uh, trying to say there is no such best this is the be the best we can consider is uh, the how many databases the uh, software has access Mm. Now that that's why I, that's why I ask that's why I ask which do you think is the best? No, no, but this I cannot tell you. This this is the best. Tinyitin has the maximum number of databases access access of maximum number of databases. But yes, if you write an article and if you copy the uh, copy from any local source, the Tinyitin will not um, show you the exact result. So in that case, you but, uh, but most most of the research journals they don't accept Tinyitin much more. they believe in authenticate yes this is also a good one because authenticate may, may has a, a subscription of billions of databases okay this is okay. like this this is this is a, the similarity index software works like this suppose uh, in your colony you have five house theek hai sir you know all this information of all these five houses so if someone come to you and ask you about any house you can easily Uh, tell them but the same way in in your neighbor or he knows only th about the three house so if someone comes to you for the uh, one house and he he can also uh, say the same things but if someone comes to him and ask about the five houses then he will not tell this to about the two house but you can tell this about the two house similarly the similarity index software if it is, if it covers the, the most of the databases then it will show you highest result but if it is not covered so this uh, free software they only covers only open access resources that's why if you uh, write uh, something from and copy something from any commercial sources this open uh, free software will not detect this so there is no, no sir actually uh, sir actually tarnitin covers the most or authenticate covers the most my question is this tarnitin 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 but yes. why why most of the research publication they don't uh, believe in the I mean, so Tarnitin are they believe more in authenticate than Tarnitin? What could be the possible reason, sir? According to you, you can see in most of the IIT they are using Tarnitin. Then how can no, we no, say? No, I am talking about research academic institutions. I am talking about research publications. Research publication because Tarnitin cost uh, this is cost high. Uh, Tarnitin uh, cost very much high price. Uh, that's why they. Take this authenticate, authenticate, drill bit, or some uh, other some, uh, low cost software. The thing is, they they will show, they will they they just safeguard themselves that we have okay. one okay. Uh, plagiarism software and we are using this software. Okay, okay. 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 every institution uh, try to safeguard themselves uh, with okay. their low budget okay. uh, software. This is okay. the okay. And my second question is, uh, you were talking about similarity index. Consider that if similarity index is less less than ten percent, don't you feel plagiarism could be still there in the document? Yes. Because uh, if you if you look at the computer, then the mm -hmm. IQ of computer is zero, and yes. if you change only a few words in a document, then mm -hmm. the similarity index can easily reach from eighty percent to ten percent, or even less than ten percent. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, that, yes. that I had that I had seen in most of the thesis I mm -hmm. have evaluated from multiple universities and academic institutions. Uh, mm -hmm. in the, this country just uh, mm -hmm. in the play of a few words you change a few words then mm -hmm. you can reduce the similarity index from 80% to 10% yes yes that's why in my presentation i have mentioned that it's totally based on, on your moral and ethics plagiarism is based on your moral and ethics and similarity is based on the binary digit the computer will check the binary digit only if it is similar the binary if the binary digit is similar it may be i am dr mohendra Ah, uh, the computer will check, uh, show that this is plagiarism or similar. I am doctor. If someone write the same things, doctor Mohendra is a good man 
and if i i write these things dr mohendra is a good man and someone also write the same things the computer will show that it is similar in but it, this is not plagiarism plagiarism is morally if you paraphrase or if you uh, like um, uh, change the synonym also synonym the computer will not detect computer will show yeah. that this is not plagiarism but you yeah. know that this is plagiarism because i have copied this concept or idea from someone's Uh, someone else and i have uh, i had paraphrased it um, but computer the, in the report that's why yeah. i often always call that this is not plagiarism this report this is similarity yeah. checking report plagiarism is based on your moral and ethics and your guide your guide should help you to reduce your plagiarism then no 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 this will not be considered i will not consider this computer okay. will not show tell you that i will not consider this your research okay. guide only one person who can prove, uh, save you who can control you to uh, do the plagiarism is this your research guide or second is your morality first is your research guide if you research guide um, do not tell anything okay okay you just copy and put your moral your morality will not work in this uh, it mean it means you also believe that percentage is not the true criteria for detecting plagiarism yes yes sir definitely percentage okay. is okay. similarity index and for official use only Okay. okay. Thank so, you. So, uh, Rupleka, ma'am, you have raised your hand, uh, but I can see that you have posted your question around an hour back. Should I read it, or would you like to ask a question yourself, Rupleka, okay, ma'am? Okay, you can read it. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right. All right. I'll read it. Kindly close your mic. Okay. So, uh, uh, Chanda sir. Um, yes, yes, Rup I can, I can read. Yeah, Rupleka Mam writes, sir. In our situation, due to unavailability of glossary of some conceptual terms in our regional language, we have to needed copying such terms or some parts of sentences from other sources. I think it is also a kind of plagiarism. How then? How can we come out from such problems? yeah this is a very good question and uh, need of the hour um, most of the local language uh, so in, in in this similarity software there is no such uh, features to detect local language but uh, few softwares have like turnitin i think they have incorporated assamese bengali uh, urkun may i um, from last one one and a half year i have not used urkun also so i am not sure urkun has this provision or not but Tanitin, I think they have the provision, and 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 uh, now it is developing English, Marathi, uh, Hindi, Marathi, Bengali, Uriya, Assamese. All these languages, uh, the software companies are developing all these uh, these uh, languages, and after two or three years, you, three years you will find there that, that um, all the uh, language you can check your Assamese um, thesis also in the Tanitin or Urdu. But the thing is, the previous Uh, resources or documents need to be digitalized in OCR format, optical character recognition. Not only in PDF. If you do, if we digitalize PDF, the um, the software, this um, uh, database, the software will not catch the words. Uh, again, it will not showing you any similarity index. But if we digitalize this printed version in the OCR mode, optical character recognition mode, hmm, then this similarity index software will. recognize this word and later part slowly slowly uh, this features will be added in all the software because of the all the commercial software because they want to do business okay so for business purpose they will incorporate and the second thing is if you are copying anything you know i am copying anything okay this is based on your moral and ethics again and again i am telling you plagiarism is totally based on your moral and ethics similarity index is based on the uh binary digit which computer check okay so so you should consider your moral or ethics before co directly copy or paste anything although you know that this copy paste um, uh, will uh, not be caught by someone may be caught but in uh, in simple sense or in uh, generally it will it will not be caught by someone but maybe someone may caught so by considering these things you should write your research paper by your own you can write but you can read others uh, in from others uh, research but you have to write by your own in this way only you can reduce the 
plagiarisms and if plagiarism reduced automatically similarity index will be reduced all right thank you sir for your response uh ruplekha ma'am i hope that answers your question so if anyone has any questions you may raise your hand or type in the chat box or open your mic and ask it directly if not then we will proceed towards the closing of this session but uh, before i close i would like to mention that the session code for this session is amazon it's a m a z o n i'm typing it also in the chat box it's a m a z o n so you can uh, do that ruplekha ma'am do you have a question i can see you have raised your hand again ruplekha ma'am do you have a question i i can see you have raised your hand again no ma'am okay all right so yes ruplekha ma'am your voice is not in the chat box ma'am your voice is breaking Ma'am, your voice is breaking. Can you type your question? Ma'am, your voice is breaking. Can you type in the chat box? Type your question. Okay. So, if not, uh, we have come to the end of session one. Uh, we will meet you in session two. Uh, but uh, okay, thank you, ma'am. So, uh, thank you, Rupli Khaman. So, uh, before that. Uh, uh uh we had an announcement um uh, um anpam sir can i go ahead with the announcement or will you announce it okay okay um this is very this is actually a sad news uh, yesterday one of our colleague um, passed away he is no more uh, his name is mr amod it is devnath he is from department of english assistant professor bahuna college so suddenly he passed away uh, yesterday and we got to know during the session only but as this was not an official declaration that's why uh, last uh, yesterday we could not um, to, we do not tell you uh, so today um, we are sharing you as one of our colleague no more with us so uh we may um, give a moment and uh, one minute um, condolence for him uh, i hope everyone will do the same okay and i pray may his soul rest in peace all right uh, uh, with this i would like to thank everyone for joining in today's session and uh, uh, let's meet at 12 20:30 again for the second session of the day till then uh, have a nice day